Hey Jack, I hope you're okay. I have a question that I'm struggling to resolve. I have a Canon 250D and take good photos, but they always seem soft, however much I edit them. They still don't seem mega sharp. Any advice at all, please? As someone who's been taking photos for close to 15 years, I get asked this question a lot. So I thought it was about time I actually just made a video, addressed the issue, and hopefully afterwards you can walk away with your camera and take sharper photos. When people say that their photos are soft, this could be down to a variety of different reasons, but in this video I'm going to focus on the most common reasons that your photos aren't going to be coming out as sharp as you'd like. So the first thing is a slow shutter speed. So my general rule is to never shoot below 1 over 150 shutter speed. So in simple terms, the shutter speed is how long the shutter on the camera stays open and lets light into the camera to take the photo. The longer the shutter is open, the more light comes into the camera, which is great if you're in a low light situation. But if you imagine freeze framing a scene and letting it pass by over a certain number of frames, which is essentially what you're doing by extending that shutter speed length, you're going to start getting blurry images. And this is known as long exposure photography. And that's how people take photos of, you know, lakes that look like they're all glossy and lights from cars going through mountains. That's all because they're slowing down the shutter speed. Whereas with a fast shutter speed, you'll be able to capture fast moving objects like cars, sports, people, animals, anything that's moving quickly without any kind of motion blur. Now the thing that I've noticed with a lot of beginner photographers is they might shoot at say 1 over 50 and think that that's an okay shutter speed. But from my experience, that is not an okay shutter speed and you're going to find that most of your images are coming out blurry. I actually volunteer down at a dog shelter and take photos of some of the dogs that need homes. And even when I take photos of those just standing there sometimes, I need to make sure that my shutter speed is like 1 over 500 because the small movements that the animals can make are so quick, but to our eye they don't seem to be. And then when you go back and look at the photos, they can come out blurry. Now when they're running, for example, I want to be shooting at like one over a thousand shutter speed minimum to make sure that their, you know, their faces aren't blurry, to make sure that their legs aren't blurry, to get that crisp image. As an example, here's a photo taken at one over a thousand shutter speed. And if we zoom in, you can see here that the dog's paw is actually a little bit blurry. There's some motion blur there, which means I probably should have taken this photo with a faster shutter speed, maybe something like one over 2000, maybe even higher. Sometimes it's not even the fast moving objects that are the problem, and it's actually down to the photographer. So I've got pretty steady hands, which means that I can shoot on fairly low shutter speed without my images coming out blurry. But if you're someone that does have shaky hands or you're just not that stable, then shooting at a low shutter speed isn't a very good idea, especially if your camera doesn't have any kind of built-in stabilization. So which shutter speed should you use? Well, there is no exact rule when it comes to shutter speeds, and it will be a lot of trial and error, especially as a beginner, you're going to be figuring out your camera and seeing what you can actually get away with. And even for me, someone who's been taking photos for years, if I turn up to a shoot that I'm not entirely familiar with, I still have to play around with the shutter speeds and make sure I'm shooting in the right settings before I actually get into it. But as you get better with your camera, this sort of settling in phase doesn't take long at all, maybe sort of 10, 20 seconds to realize what shutter speed you need to be shooting in. But for a beginner, this can take quite a long time, might feel a bit intimidating, but just go with it, try the different settings, and then you'll realize what shutter speed you need to be shooting in, and then just stick with that. One thing that I will say is if you're planning to shoot fast moving objects, or even just people moving in a portrait shoot, for example, try and shoot at least one over 500 shutter speed, if not even higher. Because what you'll do then is you'll ensure that your photos come out crisp and sharp without any motion blur. Now, as you increase that shutter speed, you'll notice that your image on the camera gets darker. So this will all be dependent on what lens you use, what ISO you're happy to shoot at. And that brings me on to ISO. So we've all been there, it's dark, we bump up our ISO, but what that does is introduce noise to the image. So here's a quick example. You can see here that the photo on the right has a higher ISO than the photo on the left. But if we zoom in, you can see how the details are lost in the image on the right. And that's because the noise is introduced, the grain is introduced, and there's less detail in the shadows. Now, my general rule when it comes to ISO is to never really shoot above 800. Now, you will need to go above this if you're in a very dark environment, as I mentioned already, but if you don't need to go above 800, don't. And if anything, try and be around 100 to 200 ISO for the cleanest images. Another cause of soft images, and you're probably not gonna like hearing this one, is your lens. So all lenses vary, and there's a reason that you can buy a 50 millimeter lens that's 100 pounds 
and a 50 millimeter lens that's 2000 pounds because they use different kind of technology. They work in different ways. And what you'll notice is that the cheaper lenses tend to have a different focusing system. So for example, with the Sony cameras, the 50 millimeter 1.8, it's a fairly affordable lens, but it uses a very slow DC motor. What happens when you use a slow focusing lens is you go to take the photo, you press the shutter, the lens tries to focus, it gets the focus, and then the photo takes. But the issue is that by the time the photo is taken, the person or whatever it is you're taking a photo of has probably moved. So this isn't motion blur or anything like that because this can happen even with a high shutter speed. This is actually just a depth of field issue and then you get soft images. And that's why I don't really tend to recommend super cheap lenses to anybody because I think that honestly, you can save up the money, get something a lot better. I actually did a video comparing the Sony 50 millimeter to the Sony 55 millimeter. If you're interested in watching that, the link is somewhere here on the screen. And regardless of what shutter speed I was using, the images on the 50 millimeter would often come out blurrier or misfocus entirely because of that slow focusing lens. Now, when I first got into photography, I didn't even start investing in lenses until like the two or three year mark. So up until that point, I didn't really know why my photos weren't coming out sharp or why I was having some of those problems. But obviously, as you invest in better gear, better lenses, you will realize that those issues happen less often. So my advice would be if you're a beginner photographer and you're making sure your shutter speed is fine, your ISO isn't too high, but you're still getting soft images, then maybe it's your lens. So go try those suggestions, keep your shutter speed quite fast, make sure you're not bumping your ISO too high, and then if you're still having issues, it might actually be your lens and you might want to look at something that has a faster focusing motor. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, it really helps out my channel. And if you do try any of these things, let me know down in the comments which one worked for you. If you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon as well, and you'll be notified when I upload another video, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.